Over three episodes, step inside the complex, dangerous, and often hidden world of bullying and into the places where it's hurting us the most. In schools, in workplaces, and online. Across all ages, at least one in five people say they are victims of bullying. Is the hounding and harassment really that bad? And how will this epidemic end? Cyberbullying, the brand new breed of bullying, is infiltrating every part of daily life and following us wherever we go. You don't have to confront the victim, you become disinhibited. That punching over and over and over again and dissecting everything about you. Online bullying is already proving more dangerous than even physical violence. There is a stronger statistical link between cyberbullying and suicide than there was between bullying and suicide. The more an individual engages with the person who's bullying them is actually feeding directly into what uh, excites them. There's a call for common decency that this has just got to be stopped. The internet and mobile phones are profoundly changing the way we interact. Psychology lecturer Nathan Makaire Wallace says they're also changing the way we bully. You know, traditionally you study three different types of bullying. There's um, a purposeful bullying, which you know, is a purpose for it. I smack the kid over the heads because I want the tractor. And then there's relationship bullying, the one we associate more with girls, where um, everyone else is coming to her birthday party but you're not invited. And so it's social exclusion. And then there's um, just aggressive bullying, which is just bullying for the sake of bullying or being aggressive just for the sake of being aggressive. So um, now, I suppose, in society, we tend to go more towards those subtle relationship bullying type ways. We're not just smacking you over the head to take the toy tractor or to get what I want and then the incident's finished. It's a subtle undermining and a psychological wearing down of your sense of self-worth. Around the world, studies show that girls in the first years of high school are most at risk from cyberbullying. Their social media use is constantly changing. When I wake up in the morning, my alarm will go off and just to help me wake up, I'll just quickly flick onto Instagram and check what's up and just like the bright light kind of wakes me up in the morning. I'll wake up, I'll go on Facebook, Mine's I'll be Instagram. eating breakfast, I'll go on Facebook. We don't like to think of us as addicted to it, but we kind of are. When we don't have our phones, it's like so stressful. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of feel lost. Mm. Snapchat is when you can send a photo to someone for 10 seconds or shorter. To see it, I just hold it down and it's just a picture of us and now it will disappear. Then there's Ask FM. Anyone can ask you questions. You have the ability to choose whether you're anonymous or your ID comes up. You'll say, I hate you, and, you know, you like, don't have to own up to it. Tinder, in a way, it's almost like an online dating website. I'll go through it, you know, whoever I like, I'll swipe that way, whoever I don't, I'll swipe that way. And then there's Omegle. Almost like Skype, except you don't, you don't choose who you Skype. It just comes up with random person somewhere in the world that's on Omegle at the same time. And it's a video, so you can see everything that they're doing. And if you don't like the look of them or you don't like talking to them, you just disconnect with that person and it sends you to another. Studies report that half of internet users experience harmful communications. One in five high school students have suffered extreme cyberbullying, sometimes on social media apps that parents and teachers haven't yet heard of. Calls to youth helplines are growing, with more children saying online bullies are telling them to self-harm or commit suicide. The upside is about people connecting across the world in ways that have never happened before. The downside is people doing stuff to people uh, in the ways that they've always done it. It's just visible and it's a bit more hard to leave it at the doorstep. The worldwide explosion of social media has spawned a new branch of psychology which studies the addictive behaviour and regressive personality traits that interactive technology can magnify. It can just, you know, repeat and go on and people who don't even know this individual will see somebody's taunts and comments and maybe want to add in, add into that. Being at a distance, being remote, being anonymous, no repercussions for you help people use technology to bully others.